Hi, I'm Ed. Hi, I'm Hugh. Welcome to Tone Twins TV and the second part of our uh, Build Your Own Fuzzbox series. So part one, we looked at um, how putting it all together and stuff. So what we're going to be looking at, especially in part two? Yeah, well, we basically everything's gone together apart from the really important bit, which is the transistors. So in this episode, what I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to select transistors that are um, suitable for this type of circuit. And, and also, and this is absolutely crucial, how to bias those transistors so that they sound their best. You don't have to actually stick to the stock uh, bias resistor values um, that were found in the original fuzz faces. If you put a little trimmer part in there, um, you can tweak these transistors to sound their absolute best and have a really great sounding fuzz face guaranteed. Well, you may be wondering what this Heath Robinson contraption is. It's actually a transistor tester. I use the circuit provided on RG Keen's technology of the fuzz face. And uh, it, although it's designed specifically for testing PNP transistors, and we're using NPN transistors in this particular first box project, uh, you can use this device to test both types. All you need to do is reverse the polarity of the power supply. So I have one marked G, should probably be marked PNP actually, uh, and the other one marked S, so that should be uh, NPN. But these are basically battery clips on the one end and a plug on the other, and they're just working in opposite polarity. So what I'm gonna do is use the, when I wired up for a uh, NPN tester. The other thing I need is a digital multimeter, which I have here. I have got two connections, so positive and negative are connected in opposite polarity to the way they would normally be if I was testing PNP transistors. Uh, I would swap these the other way around and use the other battery clip if I was, connect if I was testing uh, PNP transistors rather than NPNs. Anyway, it's got this little switch here so I can test for leakage and then when I flip this switch down, uh, it tests for gain. So I've got a whole bunch of transistors to test and basically I'm gonna mark down the leakage and gain for each and every one to select some transistors to use in this particular project. So we're all ready to go and I'm gonna start off by testing this BC183. I've marked E for emitter, B for base and C for collector on this little transistor socket. And I'm gonna plug this in carefully. Make sure all three legs are, are in. Okay, I'm not getting any leakage there. If I flip the switch, I'm getting a reading for gain. Now you can check out the website yourself. I'm going to provide the link and you can crunch the numbers yourself. But what I'm going to do is stick this on a piece of paper with a little bit of masking tape and I'm going to write down the leakage figure and I'm going to write down the gain figure. Notice this number is changing. So uh, one thing to be aware of with transistors is some, sometimes they just take an awful long time to settle down and then you get a true reading. Thought I'd pause the testing for a moment and show you this germanium transistor. It's an AC176, and we have actually got a leakage reading on there. Still got a bit of gain to it, but I think this might be marginal for use in a fuzz box. And all the testing is done. Uh, I've stuck all these transistors that I consider to be in the approximately the right uh, gain uh, range uh, on this piece of paper and I've written the gain down. Uh, these ones with G are the germanium ones and I've written down the leakage uh, as well as the, uh, as the gain and if I subtract the leakage away from the apparent gain I get the real gain so uh, I know that these two are actually not going to be usable in the 
in a fuzz face circuit because they're way too leaky. This one's just about okay, and these two are pretty good, but they're fairly low gain. All of my BC109Cs were way too gainy to use in a pedal like this, uh, in my opinion. Um, but I have a pretty good selection here, the 107s that I've got uh, pretty good, and these little BC 183s, I think they are. Uh, uh, absolutely fine as well most of them so uh, I have an idea of which ones I'm going to be using in this pedal the other thing I want to do is use the low gain transistor in the, the first stage and couple it with a higher gain transistor in the second stage which apparently is the uh, is a good way of building fuzz faces so we'll find out fairly shortly so I've got two germaniums earmarked for this one I'm going to grab this one off my little chart. This has got a gain of about 50, which might be a fraction low. And it's relatively low leakage as well for a germanium. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to trim these legs to size. Make sure I'm getting the orientation the right way around. Okay, I'm just going to push the, this in like that for now. I'm just going to solder this connection here and the middle one, and I'm going to leave the other one unsoldered for now because I've got to connect a wire to it uh, in a short while. These switches are relatively expensive. So I try to keep the soldering iron a little bit cooler and get on and off just as quickly as possible because I don't want to damage the switch with excess heat. Okay, I'll leave that leg long there to remind me that it hasn't been soldered. Uh, for the second germanium transistor, so this is the, going to be the first one in the circuit. This is going to be the second one, and I'm going to go for, um, a, from a different manufacturer, but it's another AC176. And this one's got acceptable leakage and a tad more gain. So this gain of this one's probably about 80 and that one's 50. I think they're a bit, both a bit low. Okay. Those are my two germanium transistors and the silicon ones are going in on the other side. I'm just going to take out that excess bit of wire there. Okay, it's BC183 silicon time. And this one on the end here is the emitter. That's the uh, side of the switch that has the emitter connected. So it's kind of going to go upside down this one. Again, I'm going to leave this leg here unsoldered, and I'm going to solder the other two. Okay, that looks pretty neat. And this is the other one that's going in. A bit of a fiddle the legs on these ones, more so than the AC176s. Again, the end one is left unsoldered. Okay. That's four, uh, four transistors soldered in. And the last thing I have to do is make all the connections from the trim pots over to the switches and from the switches 
back over to the board because if it wasn't for the trim pots the transistors would actually be connected over here. So the first lot of connections I'm going to make are from the three central tags of the switch over to these three turrets here. So we've got emitter, base and collector and those will connect to the board. Basically the emitter goes straight to ground, base is connected to the 10, uh, so the 100k resistor and the collector is connected via this jumper wire directly onto the base of the second transistor. Okay, rather than use the solid core uh, hookup wire that I've been using up till now, um, I'm going to use this flexible stranded stuff. It's just a little bit easier to deal with and, and uh, root around the place. And I, I think it will help to keep everything looking neat and tidy. So I'm going to run the wires from these three central tags on the first transistor switch down to these three turrets and I'm going to loop the cables underneath the jack socket and the DC socket around the corner and onto the switch that way so I'm just going to thread it under it takes a bit of time but it's a nice neat way to do it there we go I've already tinned the end of this one so I'm just going to push it through solder it, trim it and then get it onto the board and that'll be one down, two to go. Okay, so that's the first one done. I'm not going to bother showing you the other two uh, because, uh, well, that'll just take forever. So uh, see you in a second. These will be connected up. The first transistor switch across to the board. It's looking pretty good. Now I've got to basically run three more cables, or actually two cables. This third one doesn't actually get connected. Just these two are coming around to here and here. Okay, all the connections are made to the turrets here from the switches. Uh, now, the all important ones, none of these would be getting any voltage whatsoever because the 9 volt supply comes in at the top end of this 470R resistor and then gets distributed out via these trim pots. So, uh, what I've got to do is hook up from the outside turrets here and here, here and here over to the transistor switches so I'm going to be routing more cables around the other side of the box now and it's done it's all wired up brilliant I'm going to dab a little bit of silicon on there now in a second and basically it's time for testing and to make this uh, a little bit easier to understand I've labeled it the board so uh, the two trim pots on this side of the board affect the germanium transistors and the uh, two on this side of the board affect the silicon transistors in a standard fuzz face circuit there are two transistors so uh, these two affect transistor one and these two affect transistor two. Uh, I'm plugged into a universal audio Marshall model uh, which uh, sets a clean tone, something fairly neutral. Using a Stratocaster bridge pickup. So uh, I've switched the transistor switches over to uh, the germanium side and about to switch it on now and I should note that I've, I've actually preset all these trim pots to the stock uh, value specified on the circuit so we've got 33k on these two and 8.2k on these so let's have a listen to what the germanium sounds like <laughs> Okay, sounds pretty average to me. Okay, switch to silicon, it's immediately a little bit noisier. Let's have a listen. And I'd say that's uh, pretty. Uh, 
pretty mediocre too. Okay, so let's start by trying to bias up these uh, germanium transistors. If I turn it that direction, I get that kind of really gritty, you know, uh, stuttering kind of starvation mode kind of thing. It's uh, kind of a cool effect if you want to get that kind of ring modulator kind of tone, but not very good for general purpose for stuff. listening to the bottom end getting kind of fatter and things getting smoother and I've kind of set it to where it's kind of sounding good to me so let's have a look at the other transistor Preferring that, so let's switch this to silicon now. gets a little bit woofy so it's finding that balance between the woofiness and uh, like a nice full low end <laughs> tone uh, and I've switched this to germanium <laughs> Basically, it's level uh, fuzz, and this fuller mode is interesting. It has a subtle effect. Uh, if you back it off a little bit, it just cools the front end of the pedal down, and seems to make the uh, the cleanup from the guitar volume kind of a bit nicer. So let's try that out. <laughs> Turn down a little bit. Let's turn that back a little bit. So it just gives you a little bit of leeway and it's particularly good with like high output pickups. So let's crank that back up to maximum again and uh, flip these to silicon. When you 
boots and down you get that real kind of glassy quality uh, which is kind of nice for that we move to the neck pickup maybe let's have a listen to these in combination so this is germanium front and silicon out so germane uh, silicon in and germanium out So I've done that fairly quickly and I think the transistors could maybe benefit from a little bit more fine tweaking but it gives the idea I hope of um, how easy it is to kind of tune the circuit and and how the stop values on a uh, bias resistor aren't necessarily going to work for all tra all transistors and uh, tuning by tuning them by ear is uh, is a, is a really good way to do it. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoy watching everything come together and you've got a fairly good idea of what separates kind of mediocre fuzz faces and poor fuzz faces from the really good ones and know that it's uh, it's actually something that's within your control. So, uh, I mean, we should ask Ed, really. I built it. You've played it. Did you like it? Really liked it. Um, I think the key is, like we say, getting the right transistors and knowing how to bias them, which is something I wouldn't have had a clue how to do. Yeah, um, and it's so yeah. simple because because really you just got to get the trim pot in there, mm. and you got your little tweaking screwdriver, and you just do it by ear. There's no right or wrong about this. If you want a kind of stuttery uh, star transistor kind of sound, you you can you can do that. Or if you want something that's really kind of smooth and velvety and sustaining, yeah, you can do that as well. You, you just use your ears, and it makes sense. You do see bias pots on first pedals of various types over the years, but. I, I wouldn't have understood really what it was doing. So it's mm -hmm. great to sort of make sense of that. Yeah. Um, but most importantly, I think it sounds really good. And there's a load of usable sounds in there, isn't there? Yeah. But, you know, again, if, you, if you're new to this, um, a fuzz face kit is a really good place to start. And um, you can substitute the bias resistor for a trim part in your kit. Or, you know, you might just get lucky and it sounds great from the get-go. But... Um, Hopefully this has given you a better understanding and kind of demystified this a little bit as well. And by knowing how to bias, you could almost get a bunch of different transistors and try a few yourself, couldn't you? Well, exactly. It's it's exactly like kind of swapping valves in, in, in your valve amp and 
finding the ones that kind of really do it for you and actually sound great in that amp and in combination with the speaker. And transistors are just the same. And incidentally, some of the prices are just the same as well, because when you yeah, start getting yeah, into yeah. germanium transistors, my word, it's the kind of money you'd expect to spend on the old stock valves. And unfortunately, there are fakes out there. So do your research. Mm. Um, and buy from a reputable supplier. Definitely. But there's a lot of fun to be had um, experimenting with these. And hopefully today's video has been really helpful with that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you all again soon. Brilliant. Take care. Hoi Davo.